What's up everyone, TerraQuake here, and welcome back to the Pokemon Silver Walkthrough. We have officially cracked the double digits for our episodes. This is part 10 in the last part. We took down our rival in Azalea Town, finally left that place, and went through the Ilex Forest, caught a brand new team member in Pineco, aka Piney, and then made our way quickly through Route 34, so we can head on into Goldenrod City. As I mentioned in the last episode, it is the biggest city here in Johto. There is a ton of stuff to do, and I'm going to do most of it in this video. The only thing I'm not going to do is the gym. But yeah, we're just going to take things step by step. I have my little walkthrough pulled up next to me as always, so hopefully I'm able to cover everything. But hey, this place is pretty big, so if I miss something, then I apologize. Also, another thing I want to mention that I probably should have said it in the last video because it would have made more sense, but, you know, I was thinking about how we were giving our phone numbers to random people, you know, um, so they can rematch us later in the game, but I forgot that in these games, your Pokegear can actually get full, so I don't think it's possible to have every single trainer's phone number in there, so if we run across that, then shoot, that sucks, I guess, but yeah, just keep that in mind. Anyways, let's get back to the main task at hand. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, I mean, you don't have to do it in the order that I'm doing it in, but this is just how I'm going to go. So at the first intersection, we're going to go right and head on down. And this building back over here is pretty nice because it is the cycle shop. Now, luckily, unlike um, Pokemon Red and Blue, the bike doesn't cost a million Poke Dollars, so you don't have to get a voucher or anything. You can actually just get one for free right here. Yeah, this guy's like sad because, you know, with his placement in Goldenrod City, no one's actually coming to hang on. Our egg is finally hatching. Okay, so yeah, I guess this is about the time in the game where the egg from Violet City will hatch into a Togepi. Now, I'm not going to use Togepi on my team. But, um, yeah, that's pretty cool, I guess. So, there we go. Now that the egg has hatched, by the way, you can go back all the way to New Bark Town and show it to Professor Elm, and he will give you an Everstone. I'll probably do that later on. I don't even know if I'll do that on camera. An Everstone really isn't anything amazing. But anyways, um, yeah, so basically, this guy's, like, all the way in the bottom right corner of Goldenrod City. He can't get anyone to come to his shop, so he wants you to ride the bike around. Now, what I'm going to do quickly is go ahead and register it, or select it, I guess. So now we just have to hit the select button. There we go. Okay, it wasn't working for a second. But yeah, we can hop on our bike. Now, in this house right here, um, this Pokemon will evaluate the um, happiness of your Pokemon. So... Because, or well, your lead Pokemon. So because I had Pineco up front and you know he's brand new to the team, she's like, oh, it doesn't really like you very much. But Bayleaf over here should be a little better, right? Yeah. So um, that's just a good way to kind of check in on your Pokemon's happiness. So for something like Eevee, if you're trying to get like an Umbreon or Espeon, or maybe if you are trying to decide who you should give return to, you know? Um, which, by the way, you can get the team for return in this city, but I'll get to that later. For now, right over here is the game corner. This is not the game corner. This is the magnet train. Gosh, I'm getting all mixed up here. This place is so big. But yeah, the magnet train connects Johto to Kanto. Unfortunately, you will not be able to use it until we get to the post game and do a whole nother side quest. So there's nothing you can do in there for now. Over here is the radio tower. And I think we'll go ahead and cover this because this is one of the more important buildings in um the city right now actually wait hang on is it not in this game oh yeah here we go okay so in the remakes you can find whitney standing over here and this is actually how you get her to go back to the gym but in here um in pokemon gold and silver you can just do this radio quiz optionally and if you uh if you get all five questions right then you can listen to the radio anytime and anywhere you want. So I might as well go ahead and do it. So first question, can a town map be displayed on a Pokegear? Of course it can be. Can need arena be female only? Of course. Most of these questions are pretty easy. I will admit like the last one is kind of just random. But yeah, he does not use apricorns with a K. It's apricorns with a C. 
So question four, Magikarp won't learn any TM moves. That is true. And the last question is something about the radio show. Yeah, here it is. Professor Oak's Pokemon Talk is a very popular program. Is Mary the co-host of the show? I think it's no. Is that right? Yeah, okay. So it is no for that last question, but there you go. She gives us the radio card, and now we can tune into the radio on the Pokegear. So again, in this game, that's something totally optional to do. So it doesn't matter. In Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver, it's a little different. Right here, though, is basically the lottery, and he'll check the ID numbers of all of your team members, and if the number matches, or actually, I think it's like any of the digits match their weekly number, then you get a reward. So let's find out if I get lucky. Probably not. It's highly unlikely that you don't. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, it's so unlikely. As a matter of fact, that if you match all the digits correctly with, with one of your Pokemon, you get a Master Ball. So yeah, you can just tell that, you know, it's pretty unlikely to happen. But right over here is the Game Corner. This is what I was looking for earlier. Um, it's not as, you know, in-depth as the red and blue one. There's no secret base under the place. And you can't even do anything in here until you get the Coin Case, which we will be grabbing a little later on. Right over here is Bill's house. Now, Bill is actually not here. If you remember from Gen 1, Bill is that Pokemaniac. He's the dude that created the PCs. But he's in Ecruteague City right now. But once you talk to him in Ecruteague City, he'll come back to this house. And you'll be able to get a free Eevee, which is very nice. So, yeah, don't worry about it for now, though. What we can do is head into the Underground Tunnel. So this kind of runs you know, south to north, north to south. There's two entrances, basically. And it's all under Goldenrod City. And there are some trainers and items to uh, battle and pick up in here. So we might as well take all these guys on. There's not too many trainers, but the coin case can be found down here. There's also a couple of really neat shops, too. So I would definitely recommend checking this place out. And man, I swear, I want to, like, just cut out all these battles with Piney because... He's not doing that much damage with Tackle. I know, it takes a while. Oh boy, and you're going for a Harden too. Okay, yeah, we're switching. We are switching immediately. Get me out of here. Pineco, you just only have Tackle right now. I mean, I know Self-Destruct is powerful, and it's right there for me to use, but I also don't want to kill you, because that would be pointless then. Um, since he went for Harden, I guess I'll go for Razor Leaf. I mean, it's special in this game, so yeah, it's going to do a decent chunk. And that Harden will not matter. And maybe Pear will level up here as well. Getting to about level 19 would be nice by the end of this place. For at least Bayleaf and Furret. Because I think that is where the next gym leader's highest level Mon is. Anyways, his second Mon is just another Grimer. Alright, this time I think we'll switch out into Scout. But yeah, we're still continuing to switch train Pineco. If you don't know... Um, in my Pokemon Blue walkthrough, which was the first one here on this channel, we didn't do any off-screen grinding, and, you know, I, I kind of had fun doing that, because it made some parts of the game a bit more challenging. Then again, most of that game just isn't challenging, but I plan on doing the same thing in this walkthrough, so all of my training will be done in the videos. And, oh, you just had to go for poison gas right before you were gonna die. Okay. Whatever. Um, hopefully I have an antidote. I think I do, because I'm pretty sure I got some before we went into the Bug-type gym. But there we go, some more split EXP. And down it goes. The first is Super Nerd in here. Yeah, you'll find some Super Nerds, and I think some Pokemaniacs too. It's kind of like the weirdo area of Goldenrod City, if you want to call it. You know, kind of shady too. Um, there's an item right there, though. I believe that is a super... No, that's actually the coin case. So, yeah, the coin case is chilling right there. And I'm pretty sure you don't even have to fight all these guys. I'm pretty sure there's a way you can avoid them. But, you know, we're doing it nonetheless. And right here's a Lickitung. First time we're seeing this thing. And, wow, that's kind of interesting that it has cut. You usually don't see trainers have HMs. But, um, unfortunately, it is stab for Licky. Or I was about to say Licky Licky, no, Licky Tongue. Um, Piney, yeah, you just still can't take this thing on. Fun fact, over on the main channel, like, almost two years ago at this point, I think, I did a challenge run in Pokemon Crystal where I only used a Pineco. And I know from that challenge run, 
that its moveset is just atrocious. I don't think it gets any bug type moves. Of course, it will evolve eventually, and we'll be able to give it some TMs, but man, it is rough. I'll go ahead and say that. At least a pair will level up right here to level 19. That will be good. And any new moves for you? No. Alright, so Pokemaniac Isaac goes down. I'll go ahead and switch uh, for it next up in the lineup. I gotta deposit that Togepi. My party looks so big right now, but it's because it's being taken up by two Pokemon I'm not even using. But as I said, the coin case is right there. And here is actually, is this one of the shops in here? They might only, yeah, okay, so here's the thing. Some of the shops are only open on like certain days and certain time of days. So I'm just not playing at a time where this shop is open, unfortunately. But I want to say it is the bargain shop because it's only open on Monday mornings from 4 a.m. to 9 a.m. But this shop is actually really cool because you can buy stuff like nuggets and big pearls at a cheaper price than they sell for. Meaning you can basically make infinite money, if I'm going to be honest. Because you could just go to the department store and sell them for more than you bought them for. Right here, though, is the Pokemon Salon. I think that shop is always here. And yeah, if you give your Pokemon a haircut, their happiness will be boosted. Right there's a hidden Paralyzed Heal. And I want to say there's also a hidden item down here, or it might be in another spot. Let's find out. Um, it might be in another spot. Let's see. It's, uh, it's gonna be a super potion. So, um, hey, it is right there. Wow, okay, that was lucky. I was just blindly pressing A, but, man, we'll take it. We will take that. Now, that third stand right there, I don't think, is that anything? No, yeah, that's right. It's the herb shop, I'm pretty sure. Um, again, I think it's just open on, like, a certain time of day and whatnot. But that's where you can get, like, energy roots, energy powders, they're basically potions, super potions, you know, all that stuff. However, they cost less, but keep in mind, they will lower the happiness of your Pokemon. Not by much, though. So, you know, if you use a couple here and there, you're going to be fine, really. As long as you just, uh, you just don't, like, spam them on your Pokemon. And your happiness should be good. Right here, though, I think this guy has, like, a full team of Magnemites and Voltorbs, which... Could be a little annoying. Okay, there's a there's a Voltorb. Yeah, Piney, you can do this. I know Voltorb doesn't have the best defenses. But yeah, we're almost at the end of this place, by the way. And these are the only trainers in Goldenrod City besides the gym, obviously. But um, I think I covered everything down here. I don't know. I think... Oh, there's still a hidden antidote I need to pick up. And oh boy, you're going for Screech. Come on, just let Pineco, you know, kill one Pokemon in this episode at least. That would be great. But yeah, we still have a few more areas to check out in Goldenrod City after this, but they shouldn't take that long. I realized the last episode was kind of long, at least for this series. Like, it was really only 20 minutes, but the past few episodes, uh, besides that one, they've been like 15 minutes or less, just because, you know, the areas we've been covering are pretty short. But that one was long, but that's okay. We got a new team member, we fought a bunch of trainers. It was worth it. Now, I think for these last couple of Magnemites and Voltorbs, I am probably just going to save some time for you guys. And the Super Nerd goes down. So we can head down this little hallway right here. And this is where the Hidden Antidote is. It's somewhere in this little section. Come on. Come on. I know we're going to find it. Yeah, there it is. Just keep on walking around and pressing A until you find the item. That is the strat. Um, anyways, last trainer, and then we can head up that staircase, and as I said, there's two entrances to this place, so this exit up here will actually lead us to the northern part of, uh, Goldenrod City. But yeah, another Pokemaniac, and I believe he has two slow pokes, which, man, I, I love the sprites for them in this game. They do be pretty goofy, and, oh my gosh, dude, Tackle is 95 accuracy, and we're missing it. Like, come on, come on. Really, 5% chance. Also, Scout got paralyzed in that last fight, so let's see how well he holds up. This will be a good test. To be fair, these slow pokes don't really have anything good right now, so I think he's fine. Look at that. He still outspeeds the slow poke, even though he's paralyzed. What a beast for it. And he one-shots too. That's crazy, man. Goes to show how slow slow pokes are. 
However, they're still really good mods. Of course, Gen 2 introduced a slow king as well. So, um, yeah, back in the slowpoke well, if you got yourself a slowpoke, you know, hats off to you. It's a pretty darn good water type and eventual water psychic type. Um, for now, though, these ones that this Pokemaniac has, they're not really doing the best. I mean, Slowpoke only starts out with Tackle and stuff. Um, it'll eventually get, like, Confusion and Water Gun. Oh, man, we got fully paralyzed. Come on, Scout, you can do it! Yeah, there we go. Okay. And you also level up here, which is very nice. That was kind of the, uh, goal, sort of. I didn't really make it a goal before I started this video, but... Yeah, level 19, that seems like a pretty solid level going into the third gym. But for now, we'll go ahead and switch Bayleaf back in front of you. And let's head on outside. So, to the right of this exit up here is the Name Writer. So if you messed up on your nicknames and stuff, you can come in here and give your Pokemon a new nickname. Over here is the gym, and next to it kind of on this, uh, the above house, not the one below. This is the flower shop. Now, there is a very important item that you will need to pick up, but you can't get it until after the, um, after you get the gym badge. So, don't worry about it right now. Anyways, the only other place we need to check out is the department store. So, yeah, just like Celadon City and Kanto, Johto has their department store here located in Goldenrod. And there's a lot of things to do. Um, no trainers or anything, but first things first, we're gonna go down the elevator to floor basement one, or basement floor one, I don't know, B1F is how it's written. But yeah, there's a couple of items you can get in this place, except I think it's kind of weird. You can see that like some of the paths are blocked off, but I think you just have to exit and re-enter and like the boxes will be moved around you know, because of these Machokes right here. Gosh, those Machokes look so dumb. But hey, I mean, it's Generation 2. Um, let me see though, I'm, I'm kind of forgetting. Maybe you have to like wait longer for the boxes to move. Yeah, see, they're still in the same spot, but you know, I'll come back and get these items eventually. You can see them like over there behind the walls. They're just uh, an Ultra Ball, Burn, Heal, and Ether, so nothing amazing. But it would be nice to get them, but no, the boxes were just in the wrong spot at that time all right going on to floor two i think now we're just gonna kind of take the staircases up but yeah this is uh the floor that sells the basic items you know that you find in every other pokemart um this is the battle floor or whatever you want to call it they um they sell the proteins and i think x items too yeah x items that sort of stuff and um yeah i think the next floor is actually the proteins and so yeah, you can talk to that guy down there. Moving on to the fifth floor though is the TM corner. And the TMs here are pretty solid. They are all the elemental punches and then rock smash and headbutt, I believe. Or no, I don't think rock smash is in here. I think it's just, yeah, it's thunder punch, fire punch, ice punch, and headbutt. It's kind of useless to have headbutt in here since we just got that in the Ilex Force. But I don't know, off camera, I'm kind of gonna decide or maybe I'll wait until I get my other Pokemon, but the Elemental Punches could be something pretty nice to pick up. Um, now, if you're playing on a Sunday, there will be a second little cashier person standing here, and they will give you, depending on your lead Pokemon's happiness, they will either give you the TM for Return or Frustration. So, Return is a very good move. I would recommend having your starter up front or something so that she will give you Return. Because it's a normal type move and the base power is based on your Pokemon's happiness. So by the time you get later on in the game and all your Pokemon love you, you know, it will be a very strong move. So once I'm playing on a Sunday, I'll probably have to come back here and uh, get it. But again, I'm recording this on actually July 1st, which is Friday. So yeah, happy July, guys, I guess. Um, this is the seventh floor, though, and or sorry, sixth floor, and it has vending machines you know, you can get lemonade, soda pops, all those drinks that heal up your Pokemon. But that's about it. Let me see if we take the elevator again. I just kind of forget how these boxes move. 
I don't know if they're just on like a random cycle. Yeah, here we go. Oh no, never mind. I thought, no, they did move. Yeah, look, this one opened up down here. So you just have to kind of keep on entering and exiting and um, they will eventually open up. However, I feel like if I try to do that right now, we're gonna be sitting here for another 10 minutes. So I won't even bother. I'll just grab the other two items off camera. But that is all there is to do in Goldenrod besides the gym. As I said, I may have missed one or two things. So if I did, I'm sorry. You can yell at me in the comment section if you want. But uh, yeah, next episode though, we will already be taking on the third gym, so look forward to that. But for now, have a great rest of your day, and until next time, deuces!